fake. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. No, no, keep all that. Turn me down just a little bit, turn the beat up. <laughs> Bruh, uh, take, take, uh, can you hear me? For some reason I can't. <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know what's going on, I can't hear you. Say something, bro. That second track on that part, take that out, I'm gonna do it on the third track. All right. <clears throat> uh. Bruh, hey, tell the runner to bring me some water in here real quick, bro. <laughs> yeah, check it. Beast that is a yeah. Check it, I'm chilling, I'm working, they hating, they hurting, my verses, make them want to kill themselves, and I know that just for certain, my first deal got 10 racks from it, I fell down, but I've been back running, they don't understand, cause the nigga been cool, back then I was a fool, and I spent that money, it ain't funny, so my manager got like half, when he really should've got 10%, all oh, the nigga can't do is sit back and laugh, be about my math, oh six, my nigga Scoop told me I'm so sick, so I took that shit to the heart, now when nigga so ill, trying to get that house on the hill, low rent, so ill, fate on a beat, no deal. Don't even understand, nigga. I'm rolling deep, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I grew up on the south side of Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee. My mother, my father, my sister. And my, my father got a better job around when I was like nine. So then we moved to another part of town uh, called Antioch. And I played baseball my whole life. Sports, my pops was my coach. And we played baseball, I played basketball, baseball. 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 He was a serious baseball player as a as a young boy, and extremely good at it. He was a he was a pitcher, and he and his dad would spend countless hours the baseball field. His father uh, coached his baseball team, taught him all about sports. Like he was really close to him. We spent most of our vacations. Uh, and all of our uh, available time at the baseball field, and, and he was real good at it. In the summertime, just riding with him and his dad, um, his dad had a little rabbit, and he had a little fox uh, car, and we would be all over town. <laughs> and uh, we would go out south, which is where Sticks is from. We would always go out south, and we would always go to baseball games and, and whatnot. I looked like Steve Urkel, I had big glasses, braces. And at 10 or maybe 12, he also started to play basketball as well. And, and Will's dad was just, it just seemed like nothing phased him. You know what I'm saying? He was just, he seemed like a rock of a person. When we met, he was, um, he was, we were both very young. We met, we were high school sweethearts. No matter what was going on, you never seen him, you never saw him get upset. He was just, you know, he was just a real man. He, he loved his children and took, um, great care of us as a family. Lil Willie was really a strong man. He was everything, you know what I'm saying? Like like a father should be, you know what I mean? Like there to hold everything down, take care of the, like, I mean, the everything. He was a very important person in our family. Um, and, and of course, to William. He was a good guy. He was a good father and a good husband. We were preparing our house to put it on the market, and he 
had what looked like a stroke while he was painting Will's room, as a matter of fact. We went to the doctor's office. They thought, let's just do uh, more tests. By the time they finished the test, it was um, a tumor. It was the worst possible tumor to have. It was what they call glioblastoma. He got diagnosed with brain cancer, so I couldn't, he couldn't drive, so I learned to drive like, like driving him around everywhere to the store, to the doctor. And it was just a really rough time for the family. Uh, we all pulled together, you know, the hospital, um, everybody was there in support every time he had surgery, down to when they sent him home. My husband at the time was trying real hard to um, keep face and be the man and still run the house, even though uh, his health was deteriorating. I had never seen my dad cry. He told me like never to cry, like you never cry in front of people, like that's not cool, like don't cry. But then like the only time I ever saw him cry is when he told me he had six months to live. Basically when the hospital has done all that they can for him, they send him home and it's like we just want them to be comfortable. And um, he had nurses coming and checking on him and everything and um, I don't know how they know, but basically it was one of those things where it's like, tonight may be it. That Sunday, they told us that he would possibly not make it through the night. All the sisters got together and was all like, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna be there. And we were all there and the entire family was there when it happened. Um, um, It was, it was pretty hard um, to, to um, really, I guess, face what was happening. Six and I were upstairs on the computer, and next thing we know, we're running down the stairs, and his dad is taking his last breath. He died March 5th, 2001, at 10.30 p.m. I remember Will just at that very moment just kind of trying to put his fist through the wall, which he was so, and I remember just just holding him and, and just trying to stop him because the wall was a brick wall. It was the fireplace and it was the brick wall and I remember him just losing it at that point and that stands out in my mind. Six kind of just changed. Something about him changed. Uh, he wasn't the same free, um, innocent, uh, playful person. It, it was just something a little different about him. He was, he was, he was angry. He was very angry. He didn't understand how God could take his dad away from him. I mean, he was everything. Though. Like, he should be to his only son, so. I mean, that was, I mean, it was tough on everybody. I mean, it still affects me to this day. After that, at that point, I was just writing, just writing, just writing my feelings down. For my family, back when I lost my pops, they know that I lost all my sanity. Thank God that He granted me such a beautiful mother. Swear to God that I love her, I couldn't ask for another. And I'm thinking, like, let me tell you why I'm this way. Hold on, let me tell me tell you why I'm this way. Hold on, at least let me tell you why I'm this way. Hold on, let let let, let me tell you why I'm this way. Hold on, at least.
Bruh, uh, take, take, uh, can you hear me? I just don't want it to be, I just don't want it to be empty, bro. Like, I don't, I don't want it to, no, I niggas can to be something. listening to the song and be like, oh, shit. No, I, I said oh, it sounded man. good, but I said we also haven't been to school to know what to listen to. Yeah. So but I'm saying we, his ear is more trained than ours. That's all I'm saying. This will be the second one, bro. This and baby. Achilles. Achilles, somebody talking on it. Dog, that's what I'm saying, bro. It's three out of 17 songs. Let's do a hook then, come on. Do a hook. Bruh, look, p p play, it, play it from where Dolo want me to come in there, bruh. I went to Belmont and I got up with Broadway and I would just skip my classes and just do music. Just rap all day with Broadway in my dorm room. And that's really how I got into music, just letting my feelings come out after my pops died. When he left for college, he, um, he was so serious about his music, but at the time I guess I wasn't aware because I had other plans for him. Like everything was hectic, like real hectic. My mom kicked me out. I lived in my car for a little bit. Then I found out he was not going to class and not, um, he, was, he was struggling in school. They kicked me out again. When I dropped out of college to do music, I kicked out of the house again. We found out that he was, he was in a studio and I thought, well, you know, I guess we could pull him out of worse places. You know, she actually met me at the studio one day. I was like, what the hell are you doing? Like, why are you doing this? And she just didn't get it. She was so serious about his music at the time. And I finally listened. And when I did, um, I was shocked. It was, it was actually better than, than I thought it would be. I didn't expect what I heard. And I told her this is what I wanted to do. And it probably took her a year or so to come around. We made a deal. I said, okay, I'll give you one semester. And if you can prove to me that you're serious about your music, then we'll uh, go from there. Because at first I was rapping about the dumbest of shit. Like, but at the, at the time I was living that. That whole phase was just, you know, that's what was cool. You know, it was the cool thing to do and to be. And it wasn't him. And he knew that. He figured that out quick, changed it up. And he's been excelling ever since. This would be a good, healthy way for him to get that pain out about his dad. Listen, it's real talk, man. Yeah, if I had five minutes with you, pops, I know I tell you that I miss you. Yeah, I tell you things just ain't the same, but it's stuff on my mind still racking my brain like, like why ain't we talk more before you pass? But seeing you hooked up to those machines made me mad. Having good friends around me is a, a blessing. Before anything, we are all friends first. You look around and you see your friends and you see all their talent. Me and Will have known each other forever and we have that dynamic. Walt, he's the, he's, the, he's the lawyer of the group, but he's also like my brother. Like literally, like that's, it gets no closer than that. In my opinion, a pretty stand-up guy, pretty fair guy. Lunchbox. He's a DJ on 107.5. Box was just doing grunt work to try to make his way up. Now he's the prom promotion director for two of the biggest stations in the, in the city. Dee Dee, she has more patience and puts up with more crap than anybody in the group. I always say that I don't meet many women with the uh, values that my mother had, but, but Dee Dee definitely, uh, definitely has those values as, uh, as far as what's important to life. Deshaun with the pictures. Dude is very talented. He's very talented with uh, his photography. I don't see a photographer better than him. I might be seeing somebody that's as good as him, or I see somebody that Deshaun could have, these are pictures Deshaun could have taken, but I haven't seen anybody better than him. Ray, Ray kind of came in the picture um, through sticks. Extremely talented. Great video work. He's kind of like the glue that holds uh, the wolf pack together. I'm probably sitting here watching this movie right now, watching myself, thinking Ray is incredible right now. I know, I've known sticks the longest. I met first, met Fate, in eighth grade, so I'm, I was 13 at the time. Fate is, uh, Fate is a character, man. You know, I, I never, when I looked at him, I thought it would be, he would be one way. And when I actually got to know him, he's totally different than what I thought he would be. Looking back in my life, I would never think that I would be in a situation of doing 
music. But Fate is a super talented dude that can do pop records, that can do rock records, that can do, you know what I mean, hip hop records, he can do anything. Man, Fate has more talent in his pinky than most people I know all together and combined. I discovered music, um, man, as a child. I always loved music, you know. Um, my mother, she can sing, you know, she always sung around the house. It was always Al Green, James, you know, uh, James Brown, Marvin Gaye, stuff like that. Um, I caught on to really early. Looking back into all that, man, when you, when you combine everything into one, if you listen to my music, then you you may hear a little bit of, of, of Motown and you may hear a little bit of Ghetto D. I mean, Faith is super talented, dog. He's like, I got to give him credit. I just respect his his grind and I respect his craft and creativity. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna work and he's gonna make sure that he does what he needs to do to get where he wanna go. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing I respect about Faith. He knows what he's doing, he has a gift, he has a drive, and he has a talent. I mean, it is, it is amazing what he, what I can just sit there and watch him do. I had a really, really, really dear friend that, that me and my sister Malaka we took in as as another sister of ours. Her name was Ivy, you know, R. P. Um, you know, she she got into this, this, this some crazy stuff, man, and she really helped me and my sister Malaka kinda open our eyes up and, and see that, you know, um life is short, you know, life is gonna be what you make it. Um and she got killed. This is this is the worst thing that can happen, you know what I mean? And um from there, it just kind of changed everything, so, you know. How did she get killed? I mean, I'd rather not say, you know, I, I'd rather not say, um, like, I got to do this for her, because this is what she wanted to do, you know, so, you know. I, I mean, I think that makes people stronger, you know what I'm saying, just going through certain things. When you hold that pain, you know, it, it can eat at you. But it took that, you know what I'm saying, like, fate woke up and like, okay, I really need to do this, you know what I'm saying, because right now, you know what I'm saying, I want to do it for this person. It's, it's no type of anything that anybody can tell you when you have like something like that much hurt in your heart. It's nothing that anybody can really tell you to, to make you let it go. It's something you have to decide in your, in your own mind to say, hey, let it go. God does everything for a purpose and that's what I always say, you know. Um, I just try to learn from other people's mistakes, you know, and try to, and try to build my own brand and, and walk my own path, you know. I think that the attitude that you have to have in life is that the universe owes you nothing. No matter how bad your life is, no one owes you anything. You have to go out there, you have to get it yourself. And whatever I have to do to get it, by any means, make it happen, you know? So, you know. This is just determination. It's just determination, that's it. Perfect word for it. determination. Yeah, and not though I'm growing up, I'm still learning But the pain from my past is still burning And I'm feeling like Life's a battle, but I won't break I'm just gonna take it day by day Damn right, I'ma make it So I look up to the stars Cause that's where I belong We had a little neighborhood group um, It was called AWP And then I started it with, uh, with another group called BOP um, They had a... a, a a street hit, you know, back in uh, high school, and it was called South Be Ballin'. It was a club record. When I got the crowd, when I saw the crowd response from it, you know, um, when I saw how people reacted when they played it at pep rallies and, and stuff like that at school, I was like, wow, like, I can do it again. And I did it again and again and again. And, you know, just, just saying all that to say, like, uh, everything that you want to accomplish in life, you can do it if you believe, you know. If you believe you're halfway there, man. What's your name? What do you do? All right, I'm Matt Milley. Uh, shoot, I own 340 Water Sports, running the jet skis here. Before that, uh, the uh, engineer, uh, also managed uh, Fade Eastwood. Show uh, Matt Milley. I don't know how I like being on camera. I'm good. Shout out hey, to Matt Milley. Recording. Really started getting into music and taking a passion for it and realizing that there was more to the music business other than just a rapper, that there's a whole lot of other things going on. Figured out my situation to get into SAE uh, up on Music Row. Yeah. So uh, after that, um, around that time is actually when I met Fate. I went to school, man, just to kind of, you know, touch all bases. 
you know, I wanted to touch our bases. I wanted to go ahead and and say, um, you know, well, if, it's, if it was something that I didn't know how to do, you know, I wanted to learn how to do it. You know, we you know, started having a cool little friendship and he started looking out for me, uh, introducing me to different people, showing me different things in the studio, showing me how he makes a beat, you know, beforehand, you know, you just see dudes on Reason doing different things like that. Uh, I was watching him make all his beats live, NPCs, using live instruments, um, and just really how the whole creative process comes along. He just picks up shit, you know, as a business-minded person w would do. You know, he's, he's, he's took my shit, like shit that I've done, and made it bigger, like 10 times bigger. I, I think everything out to a T, and I'm about writing things down and all that. So, I, you know, with as much business as he had coming in and people always hitting him up, it, it allowed me the opportunity to kind of shine and show my organizational skills and making sure that I could go negotiate different things with him for shows and whatnot and really gave, uh, gave him opportunity to focus more on his music. He, he's a guy that, you know, um, that's about his business, you know. He's about his business and, and me too. I see a lot, a lot of uh, producers and, and they take time and they craft their beats and that's great and they do a great job at it. But one of the things I, that I, I've seen Fate do time and time again is just bring the artists in and um, figure out what what they had in mind and start creating this concept and then to just watch him put this beat together uh, on the fly. Um, you know, from playing the keys to on his NPC to, 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 doing, to doing everything that he does and be able to just put it together so well, so fast. Um, it, it just shows you that, that, that he could do anything that he sets his mind to. It's no, it's no doubt that Fade is an incredibly talented producer. You just, the beat that was playing behind the beginning of the film is, is, is fate. And he made that track, which is an incredible beat. He made that in less than 10 minutes. He went, he went to school to, 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 to become better in his craft, and I can always respect somebody that does that. You know what I mean? Okay, fate might, he, he get a sample, he might do a sample, he might just do everything original, get his beat, and he go to work. But then, the next time you hear the song, it's something else different from it. And it's, it's been, like, it seems like it's more layered to each and every one of these beats, and everything has been more meticulous, you know what I'm saying? Like he's, he's really putting in a lot of work. With a laptop and with a drum machine and a keyboard and all his little tools that he has can put together, he has, I mean, unlimited potential. He can do it all. And I wanted people to know that he's a super talented dude and uh, a, a really good person. Like, you know, I love, I love Fade to death, like a member of my family. I'm amazed that um, how much they've accomplished, and, and I, I know the sky's the limit, and that, that, that he's really gonna succeed in the near future. It was great, you know what I mean? I didn't know, like, I had no idea. Like, he's done, face done, like, R&B production, I didn't know that, hip-hop production, I didn't know that. Like, I, I, I can see, like, Fate scoring movies one day. Like, that's how deep I think it is, you know what I mean? That's, that's, that's how deep I really think it is. And he's scoring this movie right now. I do not mind repeating. I gotta give him credit. He's an idiot, but he's super talented. Why do you say he's an idiot? That's my boy, man. Fate is hilarious. Fate is the dude that's gonna come at you like you you never know what the hell's gonna happen with Fate. He plays pranks all the time. He's a big kid. But when he goes in that studio, man, he's a different person. Fate, take us out of here with freestyle, bro. Let's go. Yo. We go. I still rap, bro. This shit could be on top of me and I'll still be spitting, bro. I'm gonna freestyle. freestyle. Come on, baby, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, you can stop. Alright, come on. Yo, Fade, what the fuck? Alright, come on. We had a movie theater one day. And all of a sudden, you know, you getting this whiff of cool water. And everybody's like, damn, who is this dude wearing cool water? It's like 2010. Where is that damn smell coming from? And we all looking around, you know, trying to figure out what it was and Man, sure enough, it was damn fake. He had a, this tiny bottle of cool water and had been spraying it throughout the whole damn movie. It's just, that's just how he is. You just never know what the hell he, I don't even know where the hell he got a little bottle of cool water, what made him decide to bring the cool water and spray it at the damn movie. It's just, that's just how fake it is. It was after the Jay-Z concert uh, at Vanderbilt. I was dead tired. Like, I mean, I was going like, it seemed like 72 straight hours. Like, you know what I'm saying? I may have had like, four hours sleep. Like Dola has this bottle of, of fucking champagne in the refrigerator that's been there for years. I think it was fate that called me first. Like, dude, I gotta take a shit. Like, and like, if anybody 
even looks at that bottle of champagne, dude fucking loses it. Faye comes in, he takes the shit. Like that dude was so fucking pissed. Everybody ended up at my house and all I wanted to do, I was about this close to losing it. You know, I, I grabbed the bottle of champagne and I was like, dude, I'm about to pour this shit. They pop another bottle of champagne, actually made a sound like I popped it. I'm thinking it's a crystal bottle. I get hot. He's like, man, get the fuck out, everybody, get the fuck out. The only thing that kept me laughing, the only thing that didn't get me from snapping and throwing everybody in the pack out was fake kept dancing like James Brown. You know, I just started, you know, doing my, my James Brown slide across the fucking floor. Turns out that wasn't the bottle of crystal, there was another bottle that they had popped. Hey, fake, do James Brown, bro. You know, Dolan and Scoob, of course, known each other forever. 10 years in Nashville, 15 years. I've known Dolan since, you know, we were kids. 101 want to beat jams, man. You know what it is. Dolan White and Scooby Show. Man, we about to get in this 8 to 1 beat down after a while. We got big things coming up this weekend. What we got, homie? Man, it's going down. Face on love, jazz and jokes, man. You definitely got to check him out, man. The homie Big Worm from Friday. What up, Big Perm? I mean, Big Worm. Yeah, I met Scoob my freshman year of college. He was in the back of a school crying, shivering, no friends. <laughs> We was 18 years old, man, stayed in the same dorm. Dola from Atlanta, I'm from Atlanta, and, you know, we met. We clicked on the air uh, that first time he came on. We were the first show in Georgia Southern history to be on daily. They gave us the morning show. Like, dude, dude and I have been through being broke, having money, being broke. Going back and listen to the tapes now, we sucked. But then, people, you know, that's, that's after... You know, 14, almost 15 years of radio listening to it. You know, we did radio for, for free for five years. A lot of people don't know about Luda. Like, Luda was on radio. Chris Lover Love and Poon Daddy were leaving High 97.5, you know what I mean? Like, uh, that's, that's ludicrous to show you how big that was. That was our dream job, you know what I mean? Six to 10 in our hometown in Atlanta. Like, that was our dream job. We got a call from Atlanta. was like, man, we want to come in and interview. We go up to Atlanta. We do four or five shows for him. Dude was like, yo, I want y'all to have this job. We don't know exactly when Chris is going to move. We don't know what's going to happen, but y'all going to be the ones to take over the show. It's going to be you, Dola, and K. Sly, who was already on there. We're ecstatic. We're, you know what I'm saying, 20, 21 at the time, 21 years old, about to have our dream job. Time progressed, and we never got that job. I remember we were actually talking to Luda on our college radio show, like, yo, we haven't heard from Daryl, who was the PD at Hot at the time. We haven't heard from Daryl. He told us that the program director had took a job in another market. So we were short. Both of, both of our jaws just dropped, like, damn, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we had what we wanted right here in the palm of our hand, and it was, it was snatched from us, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people, I think, would have given up. That was the spark that got us here. We all have our own plan, our own path in life, and me and schools was to come to Nashville. It wasn't, it wasn't to be in Atlanta, it was to come to Nashville. I feel like when somebody turn on the radio, you might be having a problem, you know, having a bad day, you never know what's going on. But when you turned on Dolo White and Scooby, you forgot about that, you, it took you away. You got you a good laugh, you did something to take you away from what's going on in your everyday life. We all get discouraged sometimes, but um, having friends there and having people that care about you to, to propel you forward when you're in those low times, it's something that, that's, that's important and that's key to most people's success. It's a, a, like a crazy conundrum of people. I mean, we've been friends forever and we never come together to try to do anything. Why haven't we all just done a project together? Like, why hasn't this happened? That's the most obvious thing for us to do. And then, you know, we started working on this and started putting this together and it, it just kept getting better and better with every track. We all just came together because God placed us together. Oh, we're, we're doing a lot. Like this, this is a lot. 
All a nigga can't do is sit back and laugh, be about my math. Oh, six. My nigga Scoop told me I'm so sick. So all the nigga, all right, cool. I got you. I got you. Sticks uh, is, a, is a real talented dude. Like, he, um, he's not on, like, it's, it's hard to place him. It's hard to find, you know, like a genre uh, of hip hop, uh, within hip hop. For, for artists like Sticks, like he's not a gangster rapper. He's not, you know what I'm saying? He's not rapping about all the money he's got because you know what I'm saying? Like he's, he's not there at that point in his career. So, so um, I, think, I think he's kind of coming from a, speaking about real experiences that he's had in his life. And I think like a lot of people that can feel that. He really sticking to his guns. He's not that rapper. He's not, you know, he ain't out here like, I'm a gangster rapper, I'm this, I got, I got all these jewels, I got all this money, that's not him. Sticks is go give it, give it to you what he has, who he is in his heart, and he's. I mean, he's rapping about it, dope lyrics and high beats, man. Like I think, dude is, is an artist because if if you listen to his record, you can see the picture that he's painting because he he paints a picture when he raps. Sticks come in, he hear the beat, he got it in his head, he bopping. Next thing you know, he's spitting. They hating, they hurting, I'm versus making one of kid sales, and I know that just for certain. My first deal got 10 racks from it. I don't know where he comes up with this, some of this shit, and I'm just like, how do you think of that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, why, why did your thought process go there? How did your thought process go there? I, I haven't written down a lyric in years. I don't, not necessarily freestyling, I write in my head. His creativity, uh, bars, his de uh, delivery on tracks. And like, I just love that soul, you know what I'm saying, that comes out of these beats that fate produces. It seems like it's more layered to each and every one of these beats and everything has been more meticulous. He knows how to make a hit record. He knows how to make music. You're gonna vibe to it, I believe you are. No matter where you go in the world, like everybody enjoys good music. If you put your heart into your, your product and you put your soul into it and you just give them your best and hope for the best and pray for the best and hopefully you be blessed. If, if you're ever satisfied where you are, then that's where you're gonna be for the rest of your life. Most good good artists, they're gonna bring you their personal experiences to their to their music. That's their way. Everybody goes through trials and tribulations. The successful people are the ones that come out of them. I want this to be big, man. Like I really want it to be big, and I'm just glad I can be a part of it. To me, it's something special about Highway to Mars. This is gonna be timeless, as far as like what what we're doing right now, what Sticks is doing, what Fate is doing, what the whole pack is doing. This project is people who love what they do and putting their heart and soul onto a CD. We just gotta put our destiny and our fate in God's hands and let it go. Highway to Mars is just like, you know, just letting it go. It's like, man, fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, things happen in life. You gotta let it go and just continue to follow your dreams because at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. But, and, and like I told Sticks and Fate, you know, you, we're hoping, we're doing everything we can to put, us, put ourselves in the best position to make this project go nationwide and make it as big as possible. But if it doesn't happen, if it doesn't reach the success we want it to, all that means is we go back to the studio and we do it again. And we make it better. The square and boringly lives of monotony with no meaning. Snicker and laugh at the dreamer's demeanor so demeaning. Leading down a roadway, a path, so traveled straight lace and unbraced with no feeling. I'd be a fool to say all dream with no action is the road you must travel. But living with no dreaming can make the mind unravel. A dream reflects hope. Hope drives ambition. Ambition leads to fruition. Those who do great things often take the road less traveled. Otherwise, greatness would be the norm. Along the embankment lies discarded plans, good intentions and rough sketches of new inventions. The path, the road, this highway, is about the scars, the setbacks, the tears, but forever within our sights. So sit high on your horse, belittle my dreams because they're not what yours are, and watch as I fade in the distance on my highway to Mars.